How you going folks? I'm John Williamson and you're watching Noise 11. And we welcome you to Noise 11, John Williamson. Great to have you here. Nice to be here, Paul. And Thank we're talking you. about uh, the Big Red, but, you know, there's also a, sort of a, a final chapter on here, isn't it, When with, with the song Hang My Hat in Queensland? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we've 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 heard the John Williamson story, you know, over many years, but I mean, this makes it final, doesn't it? Well, it seems. Yeah, uh, originally I actually called the track uh, "I'm Going to Die in Queensland," and, and, and all the fans would come up and say, "That's a really sad song." I'm, I said, "All I'm really trying to say is that's where I'm going to end up. Well, you've got to die sometime, but it does affect people that way, uh, which wasn't intentional, but." Um, but the song really is about my journey, and you know, it starts in Victoria and then New South Wales end up. So I'm not really into, I'm not going to become a Queenslander. I, I underline that when I'm in Queensland. Yeah. I, I call myself an East Aussie these days, but mm. obviously I was born in Victoria and spent most of my life in New South Wales, and I'll end up in Queensland. I, I really do uh, enjoy this side of the country. Yeah. Does Sydney actually feel like home? Uh, yes, part of my home. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was in the northwest for seven years as a farmer up north, north in New South Wales. Uh, but I suppose if, if you're going to have a set, I've also got a place up in Queensland, obviously, where I'm going to end up, yeah, up in the mountains. If there is a centre for this business, Sydney is it, really, you know, ge geographically. Mm. Uh, I get work from all, all around, you know, I've got to fly to Perth, but, I mean, there's a lot of work uh, over those three states and uh, Sydney's in the middle. I, I, I guess the, only re the main reason I went there was... Um, I started off in Melbourne with New Faces with Old Man Emu in 1970, and it was a rock and roll town 100% then. Mm. And uh, there wasn't really any cabaret. So I was really start off with cabaret, you know, where you, I do 40 minutes and there's a dancing girls. And, mm. you know, that, that was what the clubs had. Uh, and uh, anybody could get work in the clubs in Sydney. It was huge. They had probably three shows a week, most clubs, you know. So uh, that was a great breeding ground to become an entertainer, really, more than anything else. Mm. I had the old man emu single on the Fable label. Yeah, did you really? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. It was the yeah. old. Uh, that was t the time of the record band, was it? Was that like you'd yeah, come out of New Faces? Uh, Fable had signed you, but there was the record band on. Well, all the and major Fable took off. All the major companies had a, wanted more money for their for records being played, so the radio station said bugger off you know and uh and that's where ron tudor started fable because he said you can have all my records for nothing and play them as much as you like <laughs> uh, but in a way i would have sold actually i would have sold a lot more uh old man emu singles because uh all the presses closed down as well the record company stopped pressing them mm. so the so uh we lost out a lot of sales because they couldn't press them. But uh, they still sold about seventy thousand or something. So. Mm. Mm. What an amazing song! You know, to think that you know that was nineteen seventy, and all these years later, here we are still talking about it in two thousand and twelve. Oh yeah, and all these years later, I've got to do it. Uh, yeah. In fact, uh, it really still is my biggest hit. You know, the way people go off when I do it at the end of a show. I think there's something about the Celtic rhythm. I even did it in folk, uh, a folk festival in France. And they, they couldn't understand a word, but they just went off. It's something to do with the rhythm of it, I think. So New Faces that night, you know, had you not gone through and, and won, mm. what would have happened? Well, I, I actually, I won the Victorian one, but I didn't win the... the but I'd already Ron Shooter and sided me up anyway, because mm. um, who knows? I, I suppose, I think about that, I suppose, uh, see, the Tamworth thing came on the year after that, the, the whole Tamworth Awards and the festival... I'm pretty sure I would have, because I wasn't far from there at Moree, north of Moree. I wasn't far. I probably would have. It would have been slower for sure, and um, and maybe Old Man Emu might have got got a gold guitar, but it was before Tamworth, so I never got a gold guitar. But uh, I probably would have gone back to. I actually did go back to the to the farm after it was released, and uh, it was, I was actually on the land when the. 2VM Maury, the radio station, rang me up and said, we've got your single. I said, well, you're lucky. He hasn't sent me one yet. <laughs> and they said, well, we're about to play it. And I put the radio on top of a fence post mm. and listened to my voice on radio for the first time. And I don't think there's ever been a bigger thrill than that. That, you know, I, I was quite surreal. On the album, you've got a song uh, called Movie Star, but you've also got another song on the album that was written by a movie star. Yeah, you know, that's, that's a nice twist. Mm. Uh, well, the Movie Star song... Um, I was actually watching Doug Parkinson, not Doug Parkinson, Parky, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Parkinson's uh, interview with Sting. 
Uh, and of course, things got world hits, you know, mm. with police and his own stuff. And I, I just, I, I was getting a bit envious because my my music obviously is always aimed at Aussies. It's been my, uh, uh, you know, it's really been what underlines why I did it. You know, is to get Aussies to appreciate what we've got. But I was a bit envious that I hadn't really, did, don't have a world hit, you know, and I. And I started to feel a bit sorry for myself, you know, I'll never really be a, a well. And then I just thought, oh, I don't want it to be that personal. And uh, and I thought the ultimate thing is like, is to be a movie star, I suppose, you know. Mm. And uh, so I, and I thought about it. It's really about people, I suppose, in in the world in general, trying to get to the top. And they and they might get to the top and come down again, but I knew, you know, you never really made it to the top. And I, but then I often think, is it really necessary, you know? Mm. Is, is that what you want? You could end up like Marilyn Monroe, John Lennon and Elvis and all the rest of them. Mike, you know, um, Michael Jackson, you name them, you know. Mm. When you get that far up the top, you lose your liberty, really. Well, you've sold over two million albums in this four country. Million, over four, four million. Four million now, yeah. wow. Oh, yeah, it's been there for a while now. Yeah, so, you know, mm. to some degree you don't really need that international success, do no, you? No, and you don't need that lack of freedom, I mm. think. You know, I think that's the reason I can still write songs because I can... I can sneak around, and, but the Aussie Aussie way is that people come and say, "Hey, you John, are you in town? Are you kind of thing?" You know, <laughs> and I'm just treated as a, I've been their, their next door neighbours all their life, kind of thing, you know. And that way, it, it keeps me on a, an even keel and down to earth, and and the person I've always been. So I I don't really believe in that star system anyway. I think mm. it I think it's unnatural. Mm. So how did this song with Russell Crowe come about? Uh, well, Russell sent me his album that had uh, the song The Weight of Man on it years ago. And, uh, you know, apparently he'd been listening to my music as a kid up the North Coast, you know, and he was into my stuff. And, um, and he wanted, I guess he wanted to know what I th- thought of the album. And, uh, and it, was, it was a couple of years later he was invited to be a presenter at the Tamworth Awards. And, um, and I said to him, mate, I really like that song, Weight of Man. I might record it one day. I just sort of... Mm wasn't serious about it. So he gets up at the awards and said, oh, Willow's going to record one of my songs. <laughs> up we go. And I, but I let that lie for a while. But I thought, well, with that sort of connection, um, we can talk him into doing a tri- one of the songs on the tribute album uh, we put out a couple of years ago. So he recorded my song, Winter Green, and did a fantastic job with mm-hmm. how a lot of great musos. And and uh, I felt like I owed him one, but I really the song made it on its own merits. So I changed the feel of it. But it's such a good idea, you know, that... It's a song about probably a younger lady saying, you know, you've got you've got to suffer the weight of a man now, mm. uh, and it really is about him. You can hear it when he talks about scars and s- stitches and stuff. I guess that's from doing his own stunts. I don't know. <laughs> Are you mates? Yeah, I'm not. Well, you know, I remember I was sitting at Wollongloo with, having a feed with with Lawsy on the wharf there, and uh, and he Russell walked past because he's got a house on the end of the Wollongloo wharf. We did have. And he had all his entourage around him, and he knew Lawsy because they, they lived one above the other at the time. And he walked over and whispered, and he said, me and the boys have been singing Big Bad Bush Ranger all day. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I didn't write that song, actually, yeah. but it's a mad song about, you know, it's a comical kind of a Bush Ranger song. So I guess then I realised he was into my songs. Yeah. There's a lot of the themes of your songs are about mates. Mate sure, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> well, there's one on this one called Mates Around the Fire. Mm. Uh, that was um, really, uh, I, I, I put my show, my show was really like theatre. I have a campfire and I have a beautiful big backdrop that's uh, two big, huge gum trees surrounding the, the starry sky and uh, Mount Sonder or the Sleeping Luba in the background. It, mm. it just creates a beautiful, and I just tell the lighting guy, you don't have to change much. It's, it's just me with a campfire sitting under these big trees at night and you've got it all. You don't have to change the atmosphere much at all maybe the colors a bit so uh, and I come out on stage and it really does look like a campfire we've mm. got that silk flame and uh, mm. and I wave it up with my hat you know when not before I sit down so it really is inviting people to join me around the campfire which is uh, uh, a real down to earth thing about Australians I think you know uh, I, I think campfires are more sacred to us than most countries and I can't imagine campfires being a theme in England you know mm. where it's pretty soggy and they don't have hardwood and they don't have stock roots where you can just pull up and so uh, it's a it's a real leveler where everybody's equal once you're around the fire so I wanted to come up with an opening song and that's where you know welcome to welcome to the fire mates around the fire came from that mm. it's an amazing career isn't it i mean 42 years of recorded history there do you mm. actually have a john williamson collection at home like all of the the records back to back oh sure yeah i've got about 
30 of every album I've done, you know, that I keep in a sort of a sacred box. Uh, I've got all the LPs and, you know, the, uh, yeah, all the vinyls, yeah. Mm. I'm starting to sell a few. They're, they're worth a bit now. Yeah, be, <laughs> well, there, there would be some collectibles in yeah. there. Yeah. Particularly for a lot of Australian but artists. But I'll keep some, though, for, the, for my family. Yeah. yeah. Mally Boy was an amazing success, wasn't it? Triple mm. Platinum. Mm. That's, uh, you know, unheard of today. Oh, yeah, it's a lot harder now mm. because of the iPods and everything else. But it would have been actually more than that, but, but we... Uh, you know, subsequently we ended up doing a lot of compilations which had all those songs on them. So, uh, so but it went triple platinum before we started compiling them, yeah. When you talk about the, the, the iconic John Williamson album, is that it? Oh, of course. Of course, yeah. I think that's when I arrived. That, that was like 16 years after I'd started, 16 mm. years since Old Man Emu. And I think that's when I started to become a better writer. And uh, so you've got the songs that I can't take out of my show. is Mally Boy... Uh, Raining on the Rock, Cooter Mundra Wardle Galleries and Pink Galars. Um, I think that's they're the main four. And they'll, they'll never leave my show because uh, they're the sort of things I can't write about again. I'm not going to write about Uluru again. And the Galleries of Pink Galars is, is about uh, me leaving the land, really. And it's just sort of that's my favourite because it still gets, gives me that connection of being on the land. Mm. Cooter Mundra Wattle will always be a favourite of mums and dads. and. And Mally Boy, well, Mally Boy is always really my opening song. I do camp from Mates Around the Fire now, but as soon as I get into Mally Boy, uh, because it was such a big album, they all just go off straight away, so I can't really throw it out, you know. Yeah, you didn't mention True Blue there. Oh, that's right. It's not funny. Yeah, well, True Blue was, uh, I'd released it on another album before that, so I often forget that True Blue was on it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and the reason, I mean, probably one of the major reasons for my success with Mally Boy was that uh, John Single, I wrote. True Blue initially for John Singles' TV show was I did it on a four-track machine at home and said, well, let's do. And uh, <coughs> he rang me up while I was actually recording Mally Boy. That's why I was I often forget that it was on there because it wasn't scheduled, but scheduled to be on it. Mm. And uh, he said, look, can, uh, we want to use True Blue for the Buy Australian campaign. I said, well, I don't want you to use the old one. I'll re-record it. And that ended up being the one that everyone knows now. Mm. Are the, the highlights that the fans have the same as the highlights that you think are your best songs? I, 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 don't, I don't judge songs on how I feel about them. I think a good song is the one that people love, you know. That's, that's mm. what a good song is. You know, you can, have, you can be self-indulgent for a while, but in the long run, as an entertainer, the, the great songs are the ones that uh, I can't take out of the show, you know, because people just love them too much. Uh, it's like um, uh, we were talking about Sidey, I mean, that what sort of came up. Kudamana Wall has always been mum's song, a mum's song, you know, mm. whereas I've come up with this Sidey, which is uh, short for sidekick, about a, the only only kid in the family was a girl on the land, and she ends up being a bit of a tomboy. And there's, it's, there is an unbelievable amount of girls out there who relate to that, and dads. In fact, I've had uh, three or four babies christened Sidey now, C Y D I, although they spell their own way, but I'm very proud of it that I've created a girl's name. Mm. I guess, uh, you know, this career has given you the opportunity to play for some amazing people. You would have met, you know, stars, politicians, prime ministers. Who's the most famous face when you've looked out into the audience, you know, that you've seen out there? Well, strangely enough, you don't generally, they don't very often come to the show. I, I think, you know, um, even mate Lawsy's never come to a show. I think they're, they're a bit shy of, you know, there's, 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 they feel a bit vulnerable. You know, I've, I've seen Dick Smith in the audience, but but it's more about the contact that I've made uh, by performing for them or, mm-hmm. you know, at an event. You know, like Steve Waugh, for instance. His family always came to a show, the Waugh family. Um, you know, the, just the magic days of... Uh, I, I often talk about you know, doing Walsing Matilda for the Wallabies and and I guess they, they were my heroes so I virtually went on the road with them for a little while, you know, I was able to go to their lunches and dinners and go into the dressing rooms after their big wins and mm. that kind of thing and never forget, you know, it's just, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget that, um, that the first time I sang Walsing Matilda with 80,000 joined, it was before before the World Cup and we won the Bledisloe, it was 24-7, I think that was a record win against the All Blacks. And I went back and... Um, and the guy said, come into the shower and sing True Blue. I said, well, I'm not going to, I've had a shower, I don't need a shower. But they're all in the shower, the True Blue. And sort of when it gets to, here's me and you, is it a cock or two? <laughs> 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 I, I, didn't, I didn't see that coming, you know. Yeah. But uh, those sort of things. But I remember the, the, uh, the Steve Waugh's last game, they asked me to do 
uh, the anthem and True Blue that day, and I threw Steve name it as a man uses Steve War too, and mm. they're all up there, you know, the cricket guys. And then I was standing there waiting to do the national anthem, and they all came out just be- just before I sing it, and they all filed. This is the probably the best team we've ever had. They all filed past me like I was the governor general. I said, "Oh, good day, mate. Oh, good day, mate. Good day." Oh no. I'll brag to my kids about that forever, yeah. you know, or my grandchildren, yeah. Well, one final question. Uh, whatever happened to uh, Ludwig Leichhardt? Is he ever going to make a comeback? <laughs> <laughs> You've been reading my mail. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that was, that was, I was, really was lost musically at one stage in my career, and uh, I guess I was just doing clubs, and, and I, I realised, I should have realised, or I did realise, you've got to get back down onto, onto the ground and play at the pubs and build up an audience through the through the you know rather than just through the clubs where you often get the older older ones you know and uh, I guess I didn't think my my music was ready for it so I, I started getting into reggae and all sorts of stuff play started to play electric guitar but I didn't want to ruin my own reputation so we had we formed this band called Sydney Radio it was originally called Clowns, but some clown already had the name registered, <laughs> and which it never used. <laughs> no, Cartoons, sorry. Yeah. Cartoons. And i got posters made, Cartoons. And I've never seen a band called Cartoons yet. Mm. So, uh, I, um, so I changed it to Sydney Radio, and I wore a red nose, and we painted myself really white, and I had red and white stripe, and I put a bowler hat on so no one would know me. Mm. The interesting thing about that was when we went into pubs, I, I realise how little respect you get from publicans when they don't know who you are. Mm. Just a poor little band trying to struggle away. And uh, I eventually took the nose off and had a couple of times I said, well, unless you do the right thing, boys, give us a dressing room. You haven't got a band tonight, you know. And a couple of times we, temp- we uh, threatened. I went all the way to to, uh, to do a disco at Cairns once, all the way. Mm. And they put us in a place where there was holes punched in the wall and rusty taps. And I said, well, you either put us in a, in a good accommodation or well, we're driving back tomorrow. Mm. And they were, you know, we called their bluff. Mm. But uh, but now it's, uh, I was glad to get back to being me, I must say. But <laughs> I call myself Ludwig Leichhardt, as you know, because he disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> and he did again. <laughs> Never to be seen again. No. All right. John Williamson, there's the new album and great to have you here at Noise 11. Good night, Paul.